Thank you. Uh, we're not going to take up too much of your time. It's about 20, 25 minutes presentation, but we're very, very lucky uh, today to have this and uh, the people that we have here to give you very relevant information. Uh, I think that's something that we're striving to do, uh, to present that to you. We are very fortunate to have our Genesis County Prosecutor, David Layton here, Assistant County Prosecutor, John Popberry. We have our Argentine Township Police Chief, Dan Allen, and we also have Linden's Police Chief, Scott Sutton. So all of these folks are here to give you real relevant information and about some of the issues. Obviously, you can see what, we're, what they're going to talk about um, from a different perspective. So without further ado, Mr. Popper. Thank you for the warm welcome. As Mr. Dresky said, my name is John Potberry. I'm the Deputy Chief Assistant for the Genesee County Prosecutor's Office. And I'm going to introduce to you my boss, Genesee County Prosecutor David Layton, who is going to do his best to get through this presentation, but he's battling a real bad cold, and we'll see how far he can get through. Uh, but this is a very important subject. We want you to pay close attention because it could directly affect your life. And so I want you to take it in a serious manner. And without further ado, here's Prosecutor David Lake. So, as you can see, I'm battling on really hoarse, and I have a bad cold, so I may have to call on John to sub in Broke through as much of this as I can, but I want to, number one, thank you for being here. Thank you for your interest. Thanks to the school administration for inviting us. This is a very serious time in our country and in our community. There was another school shooting today out east in Maryland. So this is something you all need to be hearing about and thinking about, making certain that you don't end up downtown as one of the people that I have to charge. Let me just explain briefly to you what I do as a prosecuting attorney. For those of you who have not yet studied it in your classes, when, the, when a crime is committed, as you know, the police come out and investigate that crime, right? They come out to the scene and they do, and they try to gather evidence. They talk to witnesses. They talk to the potential victim. They take uh, physical evidence at the scene of the crime. And then they gather it up, and if the police determine that there's probable cause that a crime was committed, then they bring it to me or one of the members of my staff. A probable cause means that the police officers believe that there's a reasonable suspicion that a crime was committed, and a reasonable suspicion that the accused, the suspect, committed that crime. If so, and if my staff believes that to be the case, and we think we can prove the case beyond a reasonable doubt in a courtroom to a jury, we issue charges, a warrant. Somebody gets arrested. And if somebody gets arrested, then their life is altered, right? Because it, we, it takes a lot for us to charge somebody. If I sign my name, as the prosecuting attorney on a warrant, and it has one of your names on it, I've messed up your life, haven't I? Yeah. Real bad. All of a sudden, people are talking about you. Your parents are upset with you. Your friends know that you've got issues. Your name has been sullied. You have to go to court. You may not be able to go to school. You may not be able to participate in after-school activities. You may have to hire a lawyer. That's going to cost you a whole bunch of money. You got a problem, right? So you need to avoid that. And something that's been happening in our country, as you all know, is that students like yourselves, same age group, sometimes are making threats about messing up other students or the school itself. 
And that's a crime. We're here today to explain to you what that's all about. I'm not going to croak anymore because I, I voice is bad, but John wrote the program, so he's going to be very capable of explaining it all to you. Thank you. Here's John again. Because uh, we never get that sort of applause, right, David? Yeah. It uh, feels like you're a rock star or something. You know, my sister teaches at Central Elementary right next door, and my cousins went to Linden High School, so it does have a special meaning to me. And my, I think my cousin Paul Cupper still holds some basketball records here from the 80s. Um, but you know, the topic we uh, are talking about today is very familiar to all of us as Americans. The names and base, bases of tragedies are ingrained in our brains. They're images of fear, chaos, panic, and bloodshed. Visions of police and ambulances surrounding the school building, scared students walking out in single file lines with their hands in the air. Police in SWAT uniforms with rifles at their side. Sadly, these are images that have become all too familiar to all of us in America. Littleton, Colorado, Columbine High School. Many of you were young at that point. 1999, you may not have, I'm not really sure what your ages are, but you may have just been a toddler, not even born yet. But let me tell you, Columbine, you just mentioned the word Columbine, Columbine High School. And for many of us, many adults, it strikes certain images. 18-year-old Eric Harris and 17-year-old Dylan Klebold, who committed suicide that day. They are names that have become very familiar to everyone in America. Just about 10 years ago, doesn't seem like it was that long ago, Virginia Tech University. Just uh, five years ago, Sandy Hook Elementary. It's a serious topic, isn't it? Just last month, Parkland, Florida. Genesee County, Flint, Michigan. In the past four weeks, since Parkland, Florida, our office has received 10 reports from local police agencies. From Linden to Clio, from Flushing to Bentley schools, and other areas in between, we have received police reports about similar incidents, incidents where students have made threats of some sort that they were going to shoot up their school. There were some, some cases where students have hit lists. In fact, here uh, in Linden, the day after Parkland, we received a call from Ken Engel over here, your school resource officer. He said he had an incident that he wanted to bring to our attention. And we didn't want to play any games, we didn't want to take any chances, we didn't want to second guess the message behind this YouTube video that was actually published in April 2017. But it was one of your classmates. I'm not sure if that person's here today. I'm not trying to single them out. But they put music and video to some very threatening uh, lyrics. Lyrics that they were going to shoot up the school, kill other people, shoot the principal. A very serious subject. We reviewed that case and determined in that one particular incident we were not going to charge because for a variety of reasons I won't go into, we didn't feel that there was a uh, probable cause that a crime was committed. But I want you to know that these types of incidents, threats of any sort to shoot up a school, is not a joke. Just a day or two after that initial report, we received another call from Officer Ken Engel. This time, one of your classmates here at Linden High School had written a threat on a desk that said, I'm going to shoot up a school. Was that a prank? 
Was it a joke? Do you expect me to, as a prosecutor, to understand what's in that individual's head? We're not going to take that chance. In days gone by, those cases might have been dealt with differently. In days gone by, they might have been dealt with in the principal's office. Maybe a three-day suspension, maybe a 20-day suspension, maybe a meeting with the parents. Today, I'm here to tell you, Prosecutor Layton is here to tell you, Chief Allen, Chief Sutter, Officer Engel are here to tell you it is no longer going to be taken lightly. It's not going to be considered a joke, a joke, or a prank. We're going to look at this under Michigan law, which I'll get into in a minute. And Michigan law carries with it some severe risk of some bad things that could happen to you. You know, if for no other reason than Columbine, Sandy Hook, Virginia Tech, Parkland, Florida, if for no other reason that we as humans shouldn't show some respect to those victims and the families of those victims, we should not treat this as a joke, okay? I understand kids like to, you know, they joke around a lot. They don't always mean what they say, but it's a serious matter. Now you might ask, what about free speech? Don't we have a right to say whatever we want to say? In America, we have many rights, rights that we take very dearly, that we hold close to our hearts. The right to freely assemble, the right, the uh, free right of the press, free speech. Some lyrics today from, from many songs, rap songs and other songs, carry with them some very disturbing messages. Certainly, our Bill of Rights give them the right to say whatever they want to say, but there are certain times when free speech has its limits. A very famous Supreme Court Justice of the United States Supreme Court, Justice Wendell, Oliver Wendell Holmes. How many of you have heard of Justice Oliver Wendell Holmes? Kind of a famous figure in American politics and at the Supreme Court. He once said, you cannot shout fire in a crowded theater. Actually, he said, you cannot falsely shout fire in a crowded theater. Imagine this auditorium today. If somebody had said fire and, and made everybody think there really was a fire, or worse yet, more appropriate today, an active shooter, somebody's got a gun, and you all scrambled, you know darn well you'd be, you'd be scared to death to think that somebody had come to Linden High School with a gun, given what we're going through in America. You'd be trampling out that door, fighting each other to get out. People could actually get killed just in the, uh, in the trampling. People could get injured. So that's what that, that famous quote, you can't shout fire in a crowded theater means. But more importantly here in Michigan, we have a specific law, MCL 750.543M. That stands for Michigan Compiled Law. And it makes making a terrorist threat or false report of terrorism and Threatening to shoot up a school or shooting up a school is terrorism. It makes that a crime. First, that law says that it is illegal to do either of the following. A, to threaten to commit an act of terrorism and to communicate that threat to any other person. So if you threaten to shoot up your school, even if it's by writing a simple message on a desk. Whether you mean it or not, whether you think you're joking or not, that is a threat of terrorism. And when you communicate that to others, and you certainly intend to communicate it if you write it on a desk, then that meets the first variable. Or B, if you knowingly make a false report of an act of terrorism and communicate that false report to any other person, Knowing that the report is false, that is also a violation of this law. What if you write a message on a whiteboard? What if you post a sticker on a sign that says, I'm going to shoot up the school, I've got a hit list. If you make a, a threatening statements on Facebook or Instagram or Snapchat, Snapchat, 
That is what we're talking about here. If you have a notebook and you write up a hit list of your enemies in school, that meets the criteria. But later telling the police, I was just joking around. I had, I had free speech rights. I'm an American. I didn't really mean it. I was just, it was just a prank. Well, the law covers that. In paragraph two, it says that it is not a defense to prosecution under this section if the defendant did not have the intent, that the defendant did not have the intent or capability of committing the act of terrorism. So right there, that, that crosses out your self-defense, that it was just a joke, it doesn't matter. We can still prosecute you under this law, even if you were joking around. So that's why I said it, not a joke. Third, the penalty for this crime is a 20 year potential imprisonment. Now let's be honest, nobody's going to prison unless, unless they actually did shoot up a school. Writing on a chalkboard or in your notebook or on Snapchat that you're going to shoot up the school will not land you in prison. But it is still a felony that we will charge you with. And it does carry with it certain repercussions. And that's because things are different today. Ever since last month in Parkland, there's been a different environment around the country. A heightened sensitivity to these acts. There are many consequences to making threats, whether you mean it or not. It causes fear among your fellow students, teachers, administrators, parents. Parents who have to send their kids to school. And if they have heard of a rumor that somebody was going to shoot up the school, how do you think your parents will feel sending you off on that school bus or letting you drive to school? It disrupts the daily routines of dozens or hundreds or even thousands of people, depending on the size of the school. And it diverts law enforcement resources. Instead of these, these men here going around the community trying to make it a safe place, a good place to live, they all of a sudden have to dispatch their officers in full SWAT attire to the school to investigate. It takes days, weeks, and months to fully investigate a case, even if it's a prank. This is not child's play. Students that make these threats face possible school expulsion, suspension from school, criminal charges from our office. In fact, and I'm not, I don't want to single out this individual, but the, the person from your school that did make the threat in writing that we have charged faces expulsion from school. That might sound like a good idea to some of you. Send me on vacation early, but I guarantee you, you want to stick to school and graduate. To be expelled from school is the last thing you want to happen in your life right now. Now the criminal charges I mentioned, you're not going to, uh, you're, you won't wind up in prison. You probably won't even go to a juvenile detention center, but you might. You don't want to end up in the detention center over on Pasadena Avenue. Worse yet, years from now, when you're 20, 21, 25, 27 years old, and you're applying for nursing school, you want to get a job at Genesis or Hurley in some capacity. You want to go become a police officer. You want to join the military. You, if you have a juvenile record, run the serious risk of not being able to pursue your career dream. All because of a prank while you were in middle school or high school. So this is serious business. Now we do take a lot of things into consideration before we charge. And after we, do, after we charge somebody with this crime, we take many things into consideration to determine what type of plea agreement we might come up with. Whether we're willing to dismiss the charges at the end of the court process, or whether we're not going to charge at all. 
Some of those considerations are a student's disciplinary history. Have you been in trouble regularly? If we look at your school record and we see that, see that you were suspended in ninth and 10th grade, 11th grade you got into a fight, you've been caught smoking, whatever the violations might be, we take a look at all of that. We take a look at your relationship with fellow students and teachers. How do you get along? Are you a rather civil individual? What is your home life like? You come from an abusive household, and that occurs in every community. Are there guns in the home? Are there drugs in the home? We want to know, is that person that we're looking at, do they have access to firearms? Does it go beyond your typical hunter? Here in Linden and throughout Michigan, a lot of people like to hunt. We would certainly hope that there aren't guns in a home, but many people have guns. Are they safely locked up, securely locked up, inaccessible from the student we're focusing on? The impact of the specific target of the threat. If you have a hit list, how has that affected these people on that list? Are they worried for their safety? The student's mental history or their apparent mental state, are they depressed? Have they shown signs of being a loner recently? Have there, has their behavior changed? And finally, their state of intent to the police. Like I said, the, the, the uh, law does not excuse joking around. Even if you're joking around, you can be held liable. But we do, do take that into consideration when Officer Ingle goes and talks to you and your parents afterwards and he gets an impression from you. We, we take all of this into, into consideration. Now, being a teenager, it's hard enough without having to deal with a variety of different situations in your life. Many students might have depression. Bullying is a huge, huge, has a huge impact on kids. If somebody is a victim of bullying over the course of many years, maybe from elementary school through middle school and high school, Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold felt like they were bullied. If you feel like you're being bullied, if you have depression, if you have family issues at home that are causing you trauma in life, or if you have some sort of recent onset of mental illness, maybe de severe depression, we want you to speak up. We want you to talk to your teachers, another adult, a principal, a police officer, maybe a pastor or a priest, maybe a trusted relative. Speak up and don't handle life on your own. You have people that, that love you and care about you and want to help you. Because if you don't deal with these different areas of your life, it may lead, lead to something very tragic. You may lash out, you may write something on a chalkboard that, or they don't have chalkboards anymore probably, do they? On the whiteboard or on your desk, in your notebook, on the computer, social media. If you start lashing out because you've got different things going on in your life, you could find yourself being charged with a crime. How many of you have heard of okay to say? I don't know if they have that in Linden schools. It looks like a lot of you are familiar with it. There is an app you can put on your phone. And this is a, a program that is run by the Attorney General's Office in Michigan. And if you know of a threat, if you know some severe bullying, if you feel like you're being victimized, we want you to access okay to say take advantage of it and report anything that you feel could harm you or others speak up because it's okay to say and look for that app put it on your phone just in case you ever need to use it the more open we are confidentially under okay to say the better off we all will be so in conclusion school officials I'm talking to the administrators here and the teachers. School officials should not ignore danger signs. Parents, you must be involved in your child's life. Be alert to any drastic changes. Have they, has their personality changed? Are they staying in seclusion in their bedroom? Have they kind of broke away from some of their friends? Are they starting to show signs that worry you? as parents. 
Ongoing communication between teachers, administrators, parents, school counselors, and law enforcement should be a part of this equation. The police are encouraged to take incidents at face value and report it to the prosecutor's office. So they already know that. We've already told them, we don't want you to leave anything to chance. If there is any indication, if, there's that, if there are any words written that indicate somebody might have the potential to do harm, if they write threats that they're gonna shoot up the school, don't second guess their intentions. Bring it to us and let us review it. And as I said, Michigan law does make it a violation to threaten to shoot up a school, whether you're joking or not. And we have shown in the last three or four weeks that we mean business. We have charged six school students from around the county in just a few weeks. That's probably with, with threatening to shoot up a school. That's probably more than we've done in the last 10 years. That's because it's a different world today. And we're taking it very seriously. And those six individuals, even if they thought inside that they were joking, their whole world has changed now because of their juvenile pranks. Some of them are a little more serious than others, but there have been no threats that really were on the verge of turning tragic. I'm happy to report that. But that's the message we want to give to all of you today. Take it seriously, and uh, that's all. I don't know if uh, Mr. Jesse wants to come up. We just so you know what's going on, so it's going to free for all. There's doors there, there, and through the back. You are responsible to go back to your fifth hour class. They will be taking attendance. different than they were when I was a kid going to high school. They're different than when my children were kids going to high school. My youngest is 28, 
and we have to deal with it, and part of it is on you to help us have a safe community. We're in a day and an era where we just can't anymore joke about shooting up a school or threatening to shoot up a school. We just can't do that anymore. That's what this presentation is about. I want you to know what the prosecutor does. So those of you who haven't had yet uh, uh, criminal justice, the police, when a crime is committed, the police go out to the scene of the crime, right? And they try to gather evidence that the crime occurred. And part of what they do is they interview the victim of the crime, they interview the witnesses, they might gather physical evidence at the scene of the crime, like fingerprints or DNA or whatever. And then if the police officers determine that there's probable cause, a reasonable belief that the crime was committed, they bring that evidence to me or to somebody in my office for us to determine if we want to issue an arrest warrant. If we issue an arrest warrant, then the person whose name is at the top of that warrant is in a lot of trouble, right? You agree with me on that? Nobody wants to get arrested, right? Anybody here want to get arrested? I didn't think so. So, you know, when I sign my name on that warrant, I am messing up your life pretty good, aren't I? So, all of a sudden, your name has been sullied. Your parents and your grandparents and your brothers and sisters are probably upset with you. Your friends are wanting to know what's going on. You can't come to school likely. You have to go to court. And you may very well have to hire a lawyer at great expense. So that's why we're here. We want you to know that what you're about to see can land you in a lot of trouble. And we want you to pay attention to that so you don't do it because while it may have been okay 10, five years ago, it's not okay today. It's not a joke. If somebody makes a threat about a school, I'm going to ask the police to investigate. And if the police investigate and bring me probable cause evidence, I'm going to charge somebody with a crime. And you don't want to be in that position, and you don't want your friends to be in that position. So enough of my horse voice. Here's Mr. John Potter. Thank you, Prosecutor Layton. Good afternoon, everyone. You know, the names and faces are ingrained in our heads. Images of fear, chaos, panic, and bloodshed immediately come to mind. Visions of police and ambulances surrounding a school, scared students walking out of a building single-handedly or a single-line fashion, hands above their heads, police in SWAT uniforms with rifles at the ready. Sadly, these images are all too familiar for all of us in America. <coughs> Littleton, Colorado, Columbine High School. Blacksburg, Virginia, Virginia Tech University. It's hard to do a clicker, a microphone, and turn the pages at one time and get another arm. Newton, Connecticut, Sandy Hook <coughs> High School. Parkland, Florida, just last month, February 14, 2018. We're all very familiar with that, aren't we? <coughs> Genesee County, Flint, Michigan. We didn't have a shooting, but in the last four weeks, the Genesee County Prosecutor's Office has received 10 police investigative reports from Linden up to Clio, from Flushing over to Bentley, and a few other schools in between. Those police reports that were brought to us for review were cases where students had made some sort of threat about shooting up their school. One student had a complete hit list of his fellow students. In fact, just one day after the Parkland shooting in Florida, school resource officer Ken Engel 
that you over there, Ken? Yes, Officer Engel contacted me and said, now I don't know if you're going to be interested in this. I don't know if it's something that you need to deal with. But in light of what happened in Parkland, I thought I'd better bring it to your attention. We have a young man who made a YouTube video that included music and images and very threatening lyrics. I said, absolutely bring it in. Prosecutor Layton doesn't want to take any chances. He doesn't want to second guess anything after what happened in Parkland. Bring it in, let's take a look at it immediately. So Officer, uh, Officer Engel went, investigated it fully, that, that it required a home visit, interviews with the parents, family members, a complete observation of the premises, and without going into too many details, after all was said and done, we realized this video was published in April of 2017. This young man, one of your classmates, did not write the lyrics. He only used his expertise to put the video and the music together. He didn't even know who it was that wrote the lyrics, so we did not charge in that instance. But the very next day, believe it or not, one of your classmates Maybe thinking it was a joke, maybe thought it would be funny. He wrote a threatening message that was discovered by a teacher, one of your teachers. Officer Engel once again contacted our office and we said the same thing. Do a complete, full investigation and bring us what you gather. And we'll decide what we're going to do at that point. You know, in this day and age, after what happened in Parkland, in combination with all the other incidents we've experienced over the years. This is not a joke. It's not something to play around with. If for no other reason, then we should show some respect to the victims in those other tragedies and to their families. We should not make light of these situations. But there's a more important reason. It's for the safety of all of us that we not joke around about these matters. But you might say, this is America. What about our Bill of Rights? We all have a right to what? Free speech. This country was built on the Bill of Rights. It was built on a variety of rights that we cherish. The right to freely assemble, right to religion, religious, religious beliefs, right to a free media, and a right to free speech. In fact, there are many songs out there that are very popular, especially with young people, that have some just horrible lyrics, in my opinion. They might be some of your favorite songs. Those lyrics are, in fact, protected by free speech. But not everything we say is without limits. Have you ever heard of the famous Supreme Court Justice Oliver Wendell Holmes? He is famous for having, say, having said, you cannot shout fire in a crowded theater. He actually said you cannot falsely shout fire in a crowded theater. Imagine we're in a theater here. And some, let's, let's say actually not imagine, let's realize we're in a, an auditorium full of a couple hundred students. And somebody were to start yelling, there's a school shooter, there's a school shooter. Do you not think in this day and age, just one month, one month after Parkland, that most of you would take it seriously. Most of you would be panic-stricken, would be crawling under the seats and running toward the back door if somebody had falsely said there was a school shooter. Maybe somebody lights off some firecrackers. Well, you don't have a right to make false threats like that. In Michigan, we actually have a law that makes it a crime to make such false threats. It is MCL 750.543M. MCL stands for Michigan Compiled Laws. And that statute says that making a terrorist threat or even a false report of terrorism is a crime. What it says is that it is illegal to do either of the following two items. A, to threaten to commit an act of terrorism and to communicate that threat 
to another person. Or B, knowingly making a false report of an act of terrorism, such as, there's a school shooter or I'm going to shoot up a school. Knowingly making a false report of an act of terrorism and communicating that false report to any other person knowing that that report is false. That's what we've seen in most of the cases that have been brought to us. They may have been pranks or jokes or immature juvenile ideas that would be funny, maybe I could get out of school that day, just to cause chaos. But it's a crime. And the statute goes on to say, and this is the important part for all of you to know, because that individual I talked about earlier, who did make a, a threat here at Linden High School that said simply, wrote on a desk, I'm going to shoot up the school. Something as simple as that has gotten him into a world of trouble. Because the law says making a joke, doing a prank, is not self-defense. It says in paragraph two, it is not a defense to prosecution under this section that the defendant did not have the intent or capability of committing the act of terrorism. Basically what that's saying is, even jokes and pranks can be prosecuted. Now what is the possible punishment for committing this crime? 20 years in prison. It's an adult felony crime. Now this individual that we charged from Linden was charged as a juvenile. I can guarantee you he will not be going to prison, but we'll see what repercussions come from his simple act of writing on a desk. I can tell you right now, separate from our end, he faces the possible, possible expulsion from school. Some of you might think that's a neat idea, go on vacation a little early. But you know that is the wrong choice to make, and that's not what you want to see happen. Now I'll get into to some of the legal consequences in a little bit. In the past, I think a lot of these incidents were probably handled by a visit to the principal's office. Maybe the parents were called in to talk to the principal and the student. Maybe the, the student was put on a three-day suspension. Uh, maybe they were put on a 20-day suspension. Maybe there was, they were uh, prohibited from participating in sports. Well, today, things are different. The police, Officer Engel, Chief Allen, Chief Sutter, they know our direction to them as law enforcement officers is to bring these reports to us, the Genesee County Prosecutor's Office, for review. We are out of the principal's office and we are in a serious environment called the criminal justice system. So things are different today, and we're taking them much more seriously. Some of the consequences of making these threats, there are many unintended victims. It causes fear, anxiety, apprehension among your classmates, and maybe that's what you intended to do. It causes fear among teachers, it causes fear among parents. If you make a threat here at Linden High School, even elementary school kids' parents become worried. They're not so sure they want to send their kid off to a kindergarten or first grade. High school parents don't want to send their kids off on the bus or have them drive to school. It causes the disruption in daily routines, <coughs> routines at the school. There could be lockdowns. And it diverts important law, law enforcement resources from the job that they are intended to do, which is to protect our community. It diverts the resources to the school. They have to spend days, weeks, and months investigating and going through the court process. So this is not child's play. It's not a simple prank. Students making threats face possible, like I said earlier, possible suspension from school or expulsion. Criminal charges, like your classmate is facing now. And even though you might be charged in juvenile court, even though you may not go to a juvenile detention center and you won't go to prison, considering the circumstances, assuming that there was no sh shooting taking place, 
you could face repercussions down the road that you do not even anticipate today as a high school student. How many of you would like to, to go in the medical field? Just raise your hand. Anybody ever thought about being a doctor or a nurse, medical technologist? How many of you have ever thought about being a police officer or enlisting in the Army or the Marines? I've seen a lot of hands today. Your future career aspirations could be put on hold by making a simple juvenile threat and something you would think is a prank because hospitals, the military, law enforcement do not routinely accept people into their profession that they have a juvenile record. You could get those records expunged perhaps, but it's a process and it's not guaranteed that you'll get it expunged. Why set yourself up for failure down the road? That's what we're talking about today. Now there are many considerations we, we take when considering whether or not to charge somebody, a juvenile, with a crime. In fact, it's not always just juveniles, is it, Prosecutor Lee? Just, just last week, I think it was last Wednesday, we charged a 58-year-old man with the same exact charges. He does face prison in the adult court system. He threatened to shoot up his co-workers. But that's not what we're focusing on today. When we're talking about juveniles making these threats, we take a lot of things into consideration when we're deciding whether or not we're going to charge. And I can tell you our mindset today is we are going to charge. But once we charge, there are different steps that we can take as prosecutors. We can try to work with the student and their attorney and maybe work out some sort of plea agreement. Maybe they can be put on curfew, probation, or maybe we send them to a detention center. Maybe we don't feel that they're qualified to stay in school. So we take a look at their disciplinary history. Have they been in trouble before? Did they get in a fight in ninth grade? Did they get expelled in 10th grade for whatever reason? We take a look at their relationship with their fellow students and their teachers. We take a look at their student, the student's home life. Are there drug issues at home? Is there an abusive relationship at home? Are there guns in the home? We always want to know. We ask Officer Engel, were there, were there guns in the home of that young man? A lot of people hunt in this state, and I know they do in Linden. So we're going to find guns in a home, but are they securely put in a storage locker? <clears throat> in a gun case? How many guns are there? What type of guns are there? We want to know all of that. Do you really want an intrusion into your home life like that? We want to know if the impact on the specific target, how, what type of impact was it? How much fear and apprehension was the victim placed in? That will affect our charging decision. The student's mental history or apparent current mental state, are they going through issues nowadays that they didn't, didn't uh, have in the past? And also finally, when the police officer is investigating the case, they'll interview the student. Will the student show remorse? Will they convince us that they were just joking around? And again, as I said, joking around is not a defense to the crime. But we do want to know what, were the, what was their true intention. So those are the considerations. Now, being a teenager is hard enough, isn't it? There are a lot of challenges and stresses you, need, you go through each and every day. Issues like depression, Bullying, bullying is probably one of the biggest reasons why young people end up going off and becoming a loner or showing hatred towards their fellow students. Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold out in Columbine, they became loners, they became individuals who hated their classmates because they were bullied in the early years of school. So stick up for each other, just my message to you. Stick up for each other, stand up against bullying. Family issues, do you have stress at home? You come from an abusive home? There are, there are those instances, you know, those situations in our communities all over. 
nothing to be ashamed of or embarrassed of, but they exist. Alcohol, drug problems, mental illness with parents, or maybe you're showing signs of some mental illness. That's nothing to, to make fun of, okay? It's something to take seriously. And you need to stand up and, and ask for help. You need to go to a teacher, a principal, maybe a pastor or a priest, a trusted older relative, a police officer. Officer Ingle is a great, great resource for you. Go to somebody if you're having troubles, personal troubles that you don't want, don't want anyone to know about. If you're eating away at you, or you know of some bullying, or you're a victim of bullying. Come forward and seek help. How many of you have heard of the OK to Say program? Okay, I'm glad to see all the hands. That's a program run by the Attorney General's Office of the State of Michigan. It's, it goes on throughout the state, and there's an app. Do any of you have the app on your phone? You can get the, the OK to Say app on your phone, and you can make an anonymous tip 24-7. If you have heard of potential school shooting incidents or a hit list or anything like that, report it. But don't report false threats, right? Because even though it's anonymous, if, if you start talking to your friends and you start playing a game, you can find yourself in serious trouble. But take advantage of the resources in your school and the OK to Save program. It's a, it's a great resource. If you're not familiar with it, educate yourself. Finally, in conclusion, let me just summarize some key points. First, school officials should not ignore danger signs that they see. Parents should be actively involved in their children's lives and they should be alert to drastic changes in their child's behavior. Were they once a fun-loving, outgoing person and suddenly, suddenly they become reclusive, suddenly they're going to the bedroom and shutting the door every night, suddenly their friends have started to wander away, do they have different moods, eating habits, have their daily activities changed in, a, in any way? There must be ongoing communication between teachers, administrators, parents, school counselors, and law enforcement. All of this communication should be part of the equation. Police, as they know, they've already been instructed to take incidents at face value and report it to our office. Let the prosecutor's office make the critical decisions. Don't leave anything to chance, don't second guess the nature of that threat on a desk that says, I'm going to shoot up a school. We're not going to, no pun intended, we're not going to clean, this, clean the slate and say they didn't really mean anything by it. That's what that young man's facing today. He could be expelled from school because he wrote something on a desk. Violators, and finally, if the point hasn't already been made clear enough, I want you to walk away from this. If you walk away from this meeting with not, no other knowledge than this, violators will be charged and prosecuted under the law. And you don't want that to happen. So thank you.